Another reason to trust Matthew is that he personally knew Jesus. He spent much time with Jesus. Matthew was an eyewitness. He was at the scene. He was there when it happened. Matthew, a scrupulous record keeper, speaks of real people with real names who lived in real places, places that existed then and still exist on the map today. And this too makes Matthew trustworthy. And of course, there are some critics who say that the four gospels contradict each other in some places. But to sincere readers, such criticism seems petty and trivial and can easily be proven wrong. We've just been hearing from Jorgen Svensson. He's going through the symposium item, They Were Moved by Holy Spirit. This symposium goes through the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And Jorgen Svensson is doing the first one on Matthew. And he's taking it very literally, isn't he? That Matthew wrote Matthew, Mark wrote Mark, Luke wrote Luke and so on. That's not how scholars approach the Gospels. And it's very telling when someone wades into Bible scholarship. You you can immediately tell um, when they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> and so what Jorgen Svensson is doing here is he is just showing us this Bible literalist view, this kind of fundamentalist view of the Gospels. The truth is that all of the names given to the Gospels are assigned names. So in other words, no one knows who wrote Matthew or Mark or Luke or John. Those are names that were assigned to those books. So when you're reading Matthew, nowhere does the writer identify himself as Matthew. Same with the other Gospels. It's after the books were first written that they were given these names. So it's a very uh, simplistic, um, presuppositionalist standpoint that Jorgen Svensson is approaching things from. And then he goes right in there and wades in on the whole topic of contradictions. There are some critics who say that the four Gospels contradict each other in some places. But to sincere readers, such criticism seems petty and trivial. I think it's very telling that he even felt the need to mention contradictions. He said, of course, there are those who point to contradictions in the Bible, almost admitting that, you know, this is an issue. But the problem he has is that this is an issue that isn't going to go away. It's certainly not going to go away because he thinks that the contradictions are petty and trivial. I do actually do a video where I go into Bible contradictions in more detail, thumbnail here, and towards the end of that video I deal exclusively with the New Testament and particularly the Gospels. Let me just give you some examples in case you're watching this as a Jehovah's Witness or a Bible fundamentalist and you're saying, Lloyd, you're speaking nonsense, you're being petty and trivial. <laughs> There are no contradictions in the Gospels. Okay, well, the Gospels can't seem to agree on when Jesus was born. They can't seem to agree on who Christ's paternal grandfather was. There's disagreement on whether Jesus and Pilate had a conversation. In one Gospel, they have a conversation, and in the other, barely anything gets said between them. There's contradiction as to whether Jesus was crucified before or after the Passover. That's a big deal, by the way. You know, we're talking about when was Jesus born? When he, when did he first emerge on our planet? And at what point did he die? And both of those details have conflicting information. So the gospel writers can't agree on whether Jesus died before or after the Passover they can't agree at what hour of the day Jesus was crucified. They can't agree on whether the sun was up or down when Mary Magdalene visited Christ's tomb. And they can't agree on 
whether the women who discovered Christ's empty tomb went and told others. So these are kind of clues scattered throughout the Gospels. I mean, when you're reading one Gospel by itself, you obviously, you're not going to notice this, but when you actually line them up next to each other, you're going to notice these things. So for there to be conflict between the Gospel writers, whoever they were, is actually a big deal. I think at some level, the organization understands this. Otherwise, they wouldn't have mentioned this in the convention outline to begin with. 